So look who's joining us right yes. now. The AFC Ooh. Defensive Player of the Week, folks, of the 4-0 Kansas City Chiefs, Chris Jones is here hey. on the Rich Eisen. How you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Rich, I'm doing fantastic. How are you, I'm man? doing fine. Do you need a second? We, it seems like you were just coming off a field. You're going here, you're going there, and then they ju we just plopped you down. Are, are you are you good? You good to go? Yeah, on? I'm good, man. I'm doing some sprints, cardio. What, is that what, literally what you just did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ooh. Okay. Um. What? What is? What? 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 Uh, what? What's the process? You're on a. You're on a. One of the. You're on a treadmill or something like that. What? What'd you do? Oh no, I was on. We was in the inside turf field today. Okay. And, um, usually I have to get the. Um, it's like the off day today since we play on Monday, so we come in watch a little film. And this is the day I usually get my cardio. I have to give me a couple of sprints in for to flush everything after the game out. Okay. So this is today's your cardio day. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I need just I need one of those a week too, but I can't afford that. I'm 55, Chris. You know what I mean? I don't believe you. You look pretty good to be 55, though, Rich. Thank you. You look Chris pretty Jones. good. You know what? Uh, you passed the eye test too, sir. I the way I I was there in SoFi. Uh, I watched it. Your two sacks, both on third downs. Um, defensive Player of the Week. I was stunned to hear that you haven't won it in three years, Chris. That's unbelievable. Did you know that? I didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> that just goes to show you how competitive this league is, man. It's so hard to win uh, week in and week out. We got guys that step up and do um, outstanding things. So, you know, it's an honor to finally win it after three years, man. How do you maintain the standard on behalf of not just yourself but your teammates, Chris? How do you go about that? I think it's a culture thing. Um Within our culture, I think we have a standard for um, coaches, individuals, and also players um, that we have to hold accountable each day. And um, I think it's about getting one percent better each day, and then we challenge each other, whether it's on the practice field or the meeting rooms, and to get better. So I think we hold ourselves accountable, and uh, we continue to build off of that. Well, I don't want you to name names; you wouldn't anyway. But have you, uh, in your tenure with the Chiefs, pulled somebody aside and say that's not the way we do it here? Have you ever felt compelled you had to do something like that? I mean, we had talks. I mean, you know, usually younger guys trying to figure out how to do things. Um, more so just showing them the way, um, showing them how it's usually done here. Or a new guy coming on a team, not understanding how um, this organization operates. I think pulling them aside and showing them that, hey, like something simple as we don't wear black cleats. You know what I mean? It's simple, but this organization kind of has these little things that we follow by. Um that sometimes players don't know. Um, why is that? Why don't they? Why don't you wear those? You know? Oh, listen, I don't know. <laughs> I, I I just work here. Okay, I don't make the rules. <laughs> Chris, you don't just work there. You That's dominate amazing. there, Chris. Come on now. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you've set a significant standard here, and that's that's where I'm kind of hunting and pecking here on this part of our conversation. <laughs> is that, you know, everybody assumes Mahomes has got to set the standard or Kelsey does or Reed does. I'm wondering if you are view yourself as the quarterback of the defense, that this is the side of the ball that everybody looks to you as a defensive player of the year type guy to set a standard. I think I have a huge responsibility on this team um, and also this defense. Um I hold myself to a high regard um, as in setting the example of how to lead. Um, you know, I actually enjoy those moments when it comes, whether it's fourth down, whether, whether it's critical situation. Um, I train throughout the offseason for those moments. So when they come, it's more so natural for me. Um, and, and I enjoy being in that position. You know, um, I listen to a lot of Kobe Bryant and he just talk about certain moments you you view certain things and certain moments you can kind of depart what it is to pick what it is and um you kind of get an extra boost of energy you know Kobe talk about the fourth quarter for me I try to I associate the fourth quarter with like the third down the fourth downs critical situations where that mumbo mentality coming about for me so like say overtime in a Super Bowl your opponent is inside a 10 third down that type of moment is what you're saying, Chris. Exactly, man. No, no, no. Those type of moments right there is like live or die. So that might be your last play of the season. Um, so um, 
you know, I prepared for it all season. Uh, all all season, you know, I kind of pushed myself over the edge. And then training camp, um, we do a lot of long drive situational down. So I think within the organization, it's kind of helped me prepare for those moments also because Coach Reed throughout the year, he, we still do situations, whether it's fourth down, whether it's two-minute situation, end of game, kind of help us prepare for when we get in the game, we kind of know what we're getting, but also be mentally prepared for um, how we would want to approach it. Are you going against Mahomes in those situations, Chris? In those training camp, I am. Yeah. You know what? We actually are. Um, so that's the only time where the starting defense in the season goes against the starting offense is situational, whether it's two minute or end of game situation. I'm imagining Mahomes doesn't want to lose in that situation, right? Correct? Yeah, it, 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 we get his best shot. We get his best shot. And, you know, it's more so like Andy against Spags type of thing, you know, in house. I don't think they'll meet it out loud, but they drop their best play, Spag drop his best play, and then we go at it. Sharp iron, sharpening iron, in other words, is what you're saying. I love that. And it's certainly you got to have that edge if you're going for a third in a row, right? I mean, the been there, done that mentality can creep in. And, and I'm wondering, do you, I asked this of Travis before the season began, do you openly talk about a three-peat, Chris Jones? No, not at all. Not at all. It's just so far-fetched, man. You got to get through the division and not only the AFC West, you got to get through the AFC. So much adversity can come about. So I think more so for us, it's about the smaller goals of winning the AFC West. That's the first thing we can do. We win the AFC West, we can put ourselves in a position to be in the playoffs. And then we can think about the AFC where are we at in the AFC? And then we can think about winning the AFC championship. You win that, then you can think about the three P, but it's just so far fetched and so far away, man. So you gotta I think you can focus on the smaller goals. If you're able to hit those, you'll be where you wanna be. No, I mean that that makes complete sense. But I guess from a fan point of view or from a point of view, well, I mean I mean I'm a fan just as I am talking about this sport, Chris, it it, it just sounds I'll be honest, far fetched that it doesn't creep in your mind the the legacy that would be put on the table i mean you you want to win defensive player of the year awards i know that and you deserve to in your career if certainly this year would be a great one you're off to a great start for that but you're i'm imagining you're, you're at some point thinking about canton ohio because you're certainly on a path for that a three-peat would help cement all that sort of stuff that's why i ask yeah you know um that's why i play the game for to leave it better than I uh, came in and also to be one of the best, um, you know, um, personal accolades is amazing. You know, winning defensive player of the year, that'd be uh, everything for me. But I think most importantly, when I know the Super Bowl, man, uh, you can't get that feeling anywhere else, but till you get there and win it. And I think that's most important what we're trying to do right now. Uh, I think that's the ultimate goal as a team, as individuals. I think you can sense it around the building, but it's not something we just openly talk about because we have so much going on that like you can get distracted so easy by everything that's going on. We just don't talk about it, but I think it's definitely the ultimate goal of this team. Chris Jones here, a few minutes left with the uh, defensive player of the week in the AFC and truly one of the best at his position in the national football league here on the rich eyes and show in advance of the saints. And in terms of just, again, uh, your mental approach, I just want to circle back to what you said before about how you you study Kobe. What do you mean? You listen to YouTube? You listen to podcasts, interviews? What do you mean by that? A little bit of it all. I um, watch Kobe Bryant. Um, I like this approach to the game. Um, like, prime example, um, Kobe, I think he went 7 out of 28, and he was mad on the bench, and – his trainer was like, Kobe wasn't mad that he missed it. He was mad because he was trying to figure out why he missed. And that's more so how I am. Like, why didn't I get a sack? Or why didn't I make that play? You know what I mean? So I'm always listening to Kobe before and after games to uh, critique my mental aspect of the game. Um, and, and just for inspiration also. So in that play that I did reference with you before, the overtime play in the Super Bowl. Niners are right on the doorstep. 
and you get him off the field with that. I mean, you were right in Brock Purdy's lap right after the snap. Were you thinking about Kobe pre-snap? Did that actually hit your mind, Chris? Crazy thing about it, Rich. Um, I was on the sideline to play before that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was dead beat tired, and Andy Reid looked at me and was like, we need you to go in. And during that moment, I had like a Kobe moment. I was like, Kobe was like, rest later. Don't rest now. Rest when you're done with the process. And I'm like, I got to do it. And that's how you got in? Why you got in? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it was a Kobe thing. Wow. That's amazing, man. It it really is. And it's it's just, um, it's just again, a testament of, of, of how difficult it is sometimes to dig deep and what, what you need to think of here. And plus, Reed comes up to you. He's he's kind of like, "What are you doing, standing over here, huh? Get out! <laughs> we need you out there." Yeah, what am I going to say? No, coach, I'm tired. <laughs> it's right. It's the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. So a lot of interpersonal conversations within yourself, doing mm-hmm. a lot of key moments throughout the game. So before I let you go, the challenge. Uh, look, look at that right there. Uh, that's one of those moments in the Super Bowl. And, you know, obviously you're going against some uh, some pretty big fellows up there, including at, at one point, I imagine, I know you're in the middle, uh, Trent Williams and you might might have crossed paths at one point, right? Or two? Yeah. Chris? Yeah. I bet. Much respect to him and uh, how he's been a pillar of not only offensive tackles, but uh, San Francisco 49ers offensive line. You know, uh, so much respect for the guy and how he's still – um, operating at a high level at this age, you know, um, that's a testament to his preparation and his dedication to the game. So the challenge taking on the Saints, 41, is that what you're talking about? You know, you've seen him on film this week, circling Alvin Kamara, yeah. Chris? Yeah, he's very dynamic. And also Derek Carr, you know, Derek Carr played us for multiple years, twice a year, um, been in this division. So he kind of knows us better than anyone. So it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge to affect him. Because he's seen it all. He's played us multiple times. He knows what we like, know what stands out outs of his defense. But also Alvin, um, yeah, yeah. what he's been doing these four past four games has been astronomical. So trying to slow him down at least affect him. Okay. Before I let you go, I, I always like giving uh, my guests the opportunity to address a narrative from my business. The narrative forming, despite the Chiefs having won two in a row, including last year when things didn't look all that great towards the end of the season. You did it anyway. Now, even at 4-0, and Rasheed Rice, we're waiting to hear what's going on with him. Pacheco is out, and we're wondering where the Chiefs are um, going to find the ability to just keep on keeping on and win it again this year. And I'm wondering how you address that narrative right now that the Chiefs can get got once again. Well, you yeah. know, Narratives are like opinions, man. We all got them. They all stink, right? Um, I think more so for us, um, we kind of block out all the extra noise and focus on what we can control. What we can control is the individuals in the building, uh, what we have uh, available to play, and prepare them for their best. And how do you um, come up constantly with the ability to close? This last week is a perfect example. In a game where, you know, obviously Xavier Worthy goes up top, you flipped a script right then and there, and then you score 17 unanswered to win it. You come up with two sacks on third downs, win a defensive player of the week award. How does your team constantly come up with a way to close in a league where we see so many teams trouble closing, Chris? Um, I think it's a testament to the preparation, starting with the coaches, um, preparing us throughout the week. Um we're we're understanding that we're going to face a lot of adversity, whether we're going up 10, whether we're down 10, um, staying together during those moments and also relying on our technique and preparation that we prepared throughout the week. And eventually we, we find a way to succeed. So that's coaches and players buying into the preparation throughout the week and sticking to it. Does a real Stone Cold know that you call yourself Stone Cold, Chris? You know what? Yeah, um, I kind of had a, uh, <laughs> I kind of had a run in with the WWE um, about that name. So, yeah, they know. What? <laughs> oh, what? Run in, uh, 
like a yeah. like a like a legal run in or something like cease and desist? Yeah, yeah like a legal run in. But um, thanks to the WWE, I um, came out with these sodas that I was selling, and it was okay. uh, it was in fragment because of the name, and um, they let me continue to sell it. Okay. I was using a stone cold name, so. Uh, shout out to WWE. Okay, very good, Chris. Uh, uh, listen, I really appreciate your time, and um, congrats on winning the uh, Defensive Player of the Week award. I know that that's just a a um, a small resume builder for a Defensive Player of the Year candidate, and also uh, a guy who's on a path to the Hall of Fame with a bunch of rings on your fingers. I really appreciate the time, Chris. Rich, it's always a pleasure, and thank you for the kind words. They are, they are true. Uh, and and listen, uh, one last pushback. I, I know a lot of people have opinions, and they stink. I, I don't think mine stink, to be honest with you. You know? You know what hey, I mean? Hey, Rich, we appreciate it, man. We we take them all with stride, man, the good and the bad. And with the bad, we're able to build off of it, and, and the good, we take it with a grain of salt and we understand and we keep pushing man so thank you so much i appreciate that and i feel like you sacked me without putting your entire body weight on me so thank you for that chris appreciate it <laughs> chris i appreciate you man you take care that's chris jones everybody right here on the rich eisen show taking off getting set to take on the <laughs> he let me down gently catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free